Uh, hello there, and welcome to my Logistem talk about number sense. Uh, and my name is Ethan Poon, and I am an eighth grader from Dallas, Texas, in Renner Middle School. So, the first thing we're going to talk about is divisibility rules. So, basically, we're talking about divisibility rules from 2 to 12. We're omitting 7 because that's a little harder. Uh, so, we're starting off with 2. For 2, the number must end in 2, 4, 6, 8, or 0. Basically, even numbers. Uh, for three, the sum of the digits must be divisible by three. For example, 375, you, and you take the digit sum, which is three plus seven plus five equals 15. So that's the divisibility rule for three. For four, the number formed by the last two digits must be divisible by four. For example, 165, 165, and then 24. So because we're only counted, counting the last two digits, we can get rid of all this stuff and we just take the last two digits. So because 20, we know 24 is divisible by four, uh, our original number must be divisible by four as well. So for five, the number must end in zero or five. Uh, so like 50 or 110 or 215, like those. And for six, the number must be divisible by two and three. For example, uh, let's just say 36. 36 is even, so it's divisible by two. And the digit sum is three plus six, and we have nine. And since nine is divisible by three, six is divisible by three as well. And so we continue into other divisibility rules for bigger numbers. Uh, for eight, the number formed by the last three digits of the number can be divided by eight. For example, one, one, seven, three, one, two, eight. So we omit these numbers and we leave the last three. So the last three is 128. And since 128 is divisible by eight, we have 128 over eight is 16. And then we have nine. For nine, the sum of the digits must be divisible by nine. And for example, 918, uh, we convert it into 9 plus 1 plus 8 equals 18. And so uh, since 18 is divisible by 9, uh, 918 must be divisible by 9 as well. So for 10, the number must end in 0. This is pretty straightforward, like 10, 200, and other numbers like that. And for 11, the difference of the alternating sum must be divisible by 11. For example, 793133 equals 7, 3 plus 3 minus 9 plus 1 plus 3 plus 13 minus 13 equals 0. So, what I mean by this is that first digit, third digit, the fifth digit, and we get this. So, we subtract it by the second digit plus the fourth digit, plus the sixth digit, we get this. And we, and we take the difference, we get zero. And since zero is divisible by 11, this number must be divisible by 11 as well. Uh, so for 12, the number must be divisible by both three and four. So for example, one, 144, 1 plus 4 plus 4 equals 9, which is divisible by 3. And for 4, we omit the 1. We, we have, we're left with 44, and 44 is divisible by 4. So 144 must be divisible 
bold by 12. Uh, that's it. Then we move on to prime numbers. And let me get back the annotate here first. And let's erase everything. So prime numbers are numbers with only two factors, one and itself. Composite numbers are numbers with more than two factors. So like six and prime numbers are like three. Uh, so one is the only number that does not fall into either category. One has only one factor, so it's not prime nor composite. Factors are numbers that divide another number evenly. And factors of numbers can only be whole numbers. It's like one, two, three, four, et cetera. For example, say we want to find whether or not six is a prime number. We list all of six's factors, which are one, two, three, and six. There are four factors in total, and because six is four factors, not two, then six is composite. And these are the prime numbers listed from one to 100. You don't necessarily need to memorize them, but they're really handy in like math competitions and stuff. Let's move on to the next slide. Uh, so this slide, we're going to talk about prime factorization and finding the number of factors in a number. So prime factorization is how you find the prime factors of any number. Prime factorization is usually done using a prime factorization tree like the one below. Using divisibility rules, you can factor out one prime at a time until we're left with this prime factorization of the number. For example, let's say we want to find the prime factorization for 24. 24 equals two times 12, two times two times six, two times two times two times three, and we write it in this notation. We always write it in powers because we don't write to, we don't want to write all of these twos. And yeah, so let's suppose we want to find the number of factors for 624. 624 equals 24 times 26. And we find the prime factorization of both of them. So two times two times two times three and two times 13. We combine them and we write in, in this notation. So let's take a look at the exponents, which are four, one, and one. We add one to all of them, so four plus one, plus one plus one, one plus one. So we have five times two times two, and we get 20. So the number 624 has 20 factors. You're wondering what a prime factorization tree looks like, and that is this, it looks like this. And now we're gonna move on to the problems. I have 20 of them and just try to answer them as best you can. And there'll be, they'll talk about concepts that we already discussed previously. Okay, so for number one, what is the largest two digit number that's divisible by three and whose digits differ by two? Uh, I'll give you a moment to solve this problem. And once that time is up, I'll, quickly give, I'll quickly explain. Okay, I think that's enough time. So I'll start to explain this problem. So one, what is the largest two digit number that is divisible by three and whose digits differ by two? So first of all, let's list 
all the possibilities starting from the largest. So 97, 86, 79, 75, 68, 66, and so on and so forth. So 97 isn't divisible by three because the digit sum isn't divisible by three. Same for 86 and 79, but 75 on the other hand, we have seven plus five and that's 12 and 12 is a divisible by three. So 75 must be divisible by three. So we have 75 as our answer. So I'll give you a moment to solve number two right now. So I'm gonna start explaining this problem. And a lot of you found that it's 4,654 is the correct answer. And once again, please don't send it to everyone. So 2,508 plus four, six, five, four, 5,128 plus 7,012. So we're trying to find uh, a new sum that is divisible by four, but we have to remove one of the numbers, which, which means that one of these numbers isn't divisible by four. So if we remove it and add the rest of them up, it should result in, a, in an answer that's also divisible by four. So we're gonna start using our divisibility rule for four on every single number here. So let's just cross this out. So we're left with eight, 54, 28, and 12. So eight is divisible by four because four times two is eight. Uh, 54 is not divisible by four because if you try to divide it by four, you get a decimal. And as we talked about before, decimals can't be factors. And I think you get a 13.5. Uh, so 28 is four times seven and four times three. And that's number two. And yeah, the answer is 4,054, that, because that's not divisible by four. Uh, so problem three, given a two digit number, a new three digit number is made from it by putting the digit one after it. And the new number is then A, the old number plus one, B, 10 times the old number plus one, C, 100 plus the old number, D, 100 times the old number plus one, and E, the old number.
Okay, so it seems like I think we got a lot of answers from our participants. And so I'm going to start explaining this problem. Uh, so three, given a two digit number, a new three digit number is made from it by putting the digit one after it. And the new number is then A, the old number plus one, B, the 10 times the old number plus one, 100 plus the old number, 100 times the old number plus one, and the old number. So say our two digit number, whatever it is, is A, B. I don't really care about what the digits are, just that it's a two digit number. Uh, so a new three digit number is formed by putting the digit one after it. So A, B, one. So this is our new uh, three digit number. So we know it's A is in the hundreds digit. So wait, let me just cross that. A is in the hundreds digit. So this equals 100 A. And then since B is in the tens digit, we have plus 10 B and then plus one, the units digit. So, and the old number, which is a b, uh, equals ten a plus b. So as we compare these two, uh, the one that's correct is b because it's ten times the old number. So ten times this equals one hundred a plus ten b, and then we add one because we put one after it. And so that's the answer for number three. And for number four, what number satisfies all three conditions? One, it is a composite number between 62 and 72. And the sum of the digits is a prime number and it has more than four factors. So this, I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes, maybe one or two, to solve this problem. Well, once again, uh, please don't like send it to everyone. I know I say that a lot, but uh, if you send it to everyone, then everyone can see it. And we kind of want uh, everyone to work it out for themselves.
Okay, so I think that's enough time for this question. Uh, we have a lot of other questions to get through. Uh, so one number satisfies all three conditions. It is a composite number between 62 and 72. Some of the digits is a prime number and it has more than four factors. So we're gonna start with uh, condition one. So we're gonna list all the composite numbers between 62 and 72. Uh, keep in mind that this is exclusive, meaning it doesn't count 62 or 72. Uh, and there are 20 questions, but we don't have to get through them all. Uh, so we have 63, 64, 65, 66, uh, 68, 69, 70, and I think 71 is a prime number. Uh, so the sum of the digits is a prime number is our second objective. So we add them up for all of these. So this one's digit sum is nine, 10, 11, wait, hold on. Uh, there we go, 11. 12, and then 14, and then 15, and seven. So as we can see, the sum of the digits is a prime number. Uh, only 70 meets this requirement, and 65, since 11 and seven are the only prime numbers here. So, and the third objective is to have as more than four factors. So 65, has 65 prime factorization is five times 13. So we have these. So one plus one, one plus one plus four. And so 65 has four factors and it does not meet our third requirement because it clearly says it has more than four factors. Uh, so our only candidate is 70. And just to prove it, uh, 70 prime factorization is two, uh, times two times five times seven. Uh, so we have these one, 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 one plus one times one plus one times one plus one again. And we get two to the third and we get eight, which is definitely more than four. So that's our fourth problem. So we're gonna move on to the fifth. And remember, if you guys have any questions, you can just send me in the chat. Uh, so number five, how many positive three digit integers are divisible by both 11 and five? Uh, so I'm gonna give you guys some time to solve this problem.
Uh, so I think we've given enough time for this. Uh, so for how many positive three digit integers are divisible by both 11 and five? Uh, so to solve this problem, uh, we're gonna have to find the LCM of 11 and five. So that just makes things easier. So we get 55. So that's the least common multiple if you're wondering what that is. Uh, so let's just find the least three digit integer as divisible by both 11 and five, which is just five. So it's 55 and then we get 110. So that's our least three digit integer that's both, that meets our criteria. So we have 110 is a lower range, I guess. And we're trying, now we're trying to find maximum, which is uh, 55. Uh, it's gonna test a few. So 13, so that's 5501655115517. So that's not our biggest one that we can achieve. So 715, oh, we'll keep counting by 825 and 935 and then 990, which is uh, 55 times 18, I think. So we have 990 as our largest number that we have. So 11, 11 10, so I guess, 110 uh, over 55 is two, and 990 divided by 55, as we said earlier, is 18. So now all we have to do is count the numbers from two to 18. And this is inclusive, which means we do count two and 18. So all we have to do is 18. And then since we're not counting one because 55 is not a three digit number, we subtract one. And I think we get 17. So do you guys have any questions? And if you do, you can send me in the chat, otherwise better move on. Uh, so I'm going to be moving on. Uh, so for number six, the positive difference between two consecutive perfect squares is 35. What is the greater of the two squares? So uh, I'm going to give you a few moments for this one.
Uh, so I think that's enough time. And the positive, so the positive difference between two consecutive perfect squares is 35. And what is the greater of the two squares? So for my solution, I'm gonna be using difference of squares. If you don't know what that is, you can tell me in the chat, I can quickly explain it for you. So it's just a formula that just gives us, gives us the difference of squares. So uh, since we're dealing with two consecutive perfect squares, so we're doing a plus one squared minus a squared. Uh, so this is 35 as set by the problem. And so we write this out. A. So we have two a plus one equals 35. And then we get two a equals 34 and a equals 17. Wait, that's and that's not the answer. I, I don't know why I circled that. Uh, so a is the smaller number. So a plus one is the greater number and a is 18. Uh, the answer is 18. I don't know why I circle 17. Okay, so I'm gonna be moving on. Uh, so seven was the least positive multiple of 72. That is exactly 16 positive factors. So again, I'm gonna give you a minute for this one. So I think I've given enough time. So I'm gonna start explaining this problem. Uh, so what is the least positive multiple of 72? That is exactly 16 positive factors. So 72 has a prime factorization of two to the third times three to the squared. So, so you have three plus one times two plus one equals four times three, which is 12. So that's not 16, so we can rule that one out. Next, the multiple of 72 is 144, so that's 12 times 12. And so we get this. And so we add one to both the exponents and, wait, no, that's four. So that's supposed to be four. And two plus one equals five times three, and that's 15. Again, still not 16, so we're gonna move on from that. And then we have 216, which is uh, 72 times three, so it's two to the third times three, two to the third times three to the third. So we have three plus one times three plus one again. So four times four and we have 16. So that's, that meets our criteria and our answer is 216. Uh, do you have any questions for that?
Okay, so I'm gonna move on to the next one. So eight was the least positive integer that has each of the first eight positive integers as factors. Uh, since we're running a little low on time, I'm just not gonna give you time to do it. And I, uh, I'm just gonna slowly move through these problems myself. So what is the least positive integer that has each of the first eight positive integers as factors? So we have first eight positive integers are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So uh, we're looking for a number that has all of these numbers as factors. So, uh, so two to the third and then seven and two times three and five, two to the square, three, two, one. Uh, so we can cross that one because that's not really a factor we have to worry about here. So the highest power of two is three as because that's eight, that's right here. So we have two to three, then we multiply by three because the three to the first, because that's the highest power of three we have here. Then we do the same for five and seven, which are also one, so five and seven. So we have eight times three times five times seven, which is, since we can multiply that quickly, so 24, 35. So uh, I'm just going to multiply that to. And then so that's 840. And that's my answer. Uh, do you have guys have any questions? If not, I'm going to move on. Okay, so no questions, so I'm gonna move on to number nine. So what is the greatest integer value of n such that 635040 is divisible by two to the n? So for this one, we're gonna to have to find the prime factorization of this number and calculate the number of twos that we get. So right off the bat, we can see the first three, the last three digits are div divisible by eight, so we can divide by eight there. So, So we get uh, just and then we get seven nine three eighty, and then we can divide that by four, or can we divide by eight? I think we can. Uh, so, wait, no, we can't. So I'm going to divide by four again. So I'm going to do this off to the side. So four. Uh, so so one, and then we got thirty-nine, uh, and then nine, then we got thirty-three, and then eight, and then one eight, and then four, and then two zero, which is five. So. 19485. Uh, since this is an odd number, we don't have to factorize by two anymore. So we're just looking for twos and we see one, two, three, four, five twos. So the greatest integer value of n is five. Uh, do you guys have any questions? You do, you can send me in the chat by idea. Okay, so it seems like there's no questions. So I'm gonna move on to number 10. Uh, so the product of two positive three digit palindromes, which are just numbers that read the same forward and backward, like 121 or 292 is 436995. What is their sum? So if we look back to our divisibility rules, we can clearly see that this is divisible by five and nine because four 
plus 3 plus 6 plus 9 plus 9 plus 5 equals equals 7 plus 15 plus 14 equals 36, which is divisible by 9. So uh, because it's divisible by 5, we have a 5 something 5. Uh, can't really assume that it's divisible by 9 yet because you can, there's other multiples of 9 that we, I mean, multiples of 3 that we can use, like 3 dash 3 or 6 dash 6. Uh, so, or 7 dash 3 or 7 dash 3. So we can factorize by doing 4, 3, 6, or 9, 9, 5. Uh, uh, can you please mute that? So we divide by five, and so we get so I'm doing the division on the bottom here. So we have thirty six. And then we have seven and then, then we have 19 and then three then third and then 49. I'm sorry about that. And nine and then 45, which is at the bottom there. So it's eight, seven, three. No, wait, eight, seven, three, nine, nine. And since we figured out it's also divisible by nine, we can factor out nine again. So I'm doing this at the top this time. Wait, where'd that go? Uh, eight, seven, three, nine, nine, and that divide by nine. Uh, so we got nine, then 63, and then 63, and that we get 99 on the bottom, bottom there. And then we get, so we put zero. Okay. Oh, wait, so we put one and then a one. Wait, let me just do this. So we put 99 over there, and then we have 63, and then we put zero. And can I do something? I'm pretty sure I did. Uh, so let's, I'm going to. Uh, uh, can you guys give me a few minutes? You can work this out if you want to, too.
Uh, okay, so I uh, figured it out uh, on my scratch paper here. So I managed to find out the prime factorization of this number. It's like ignore all these background stuff. Uh, so prime factorization is three to the fourth times five times 13, then times 83, which is a big prime. Uh, so as mentioned before, we have to have a five something five. Uh, so with these factors, what we can get as a factor of this big number is 585 and times something. And if you multiply the remaining factors out, the other something is 747, which as the problem describes is also a palindrome. So what we're finding is there's some, so 585 plus 747 is 2, 2, 1, 3, 1, 13, 1332. Uh, so you guys okay with that? Okay, so I'm going to be moving on. Uh, so this one is a much simpler problem. So find the number of factors for 928. So we're going to find 928 prime factorization. So we can see that's divisible by four. So two times two, and we get one, two, uh, and that, and we just, and this is divisible by two again, so make four again. And it's also divisible by eight as well, so, uh, so five times a, so two, and then 29. So this is two to the fifth, so one, two, three, four, five times 29 to the one. So using our formula from earlier, that's not that, that's not right. And so we get six times two equals 12. So 928 has 12 factors. So guys are okay with that, I'm gonna move on. Any questions? You can type in the chat once again. So this is number 12, but A equals one, B equals two, C equals three, and dot, 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 and Z equals 26. The product value of a word is equal to the product of the values of its letters. For example, C and B has a product value of three times one times two equals six. And what common English word has a product value of 715, and it does not have to be of three. So to solve this problem, once again, we're gonna to have to turn to prime factorization. And we divide by five, so we get one, uh, four, and three. And then we factor that again, so we get 11 times 13. Uh, so this is five times one times 13. So five is E, then uh, I think 11 is K, and then 13 is M, and as you can clear, as you can probably have figured out, uh, you can't really make a common English word with these letters. So since it does not have to be a length three, we can look at A, which equals one. And if you multiply it by anything by one, it just, it's the same number. So we can add an A to there. And we can see that we can make a common English word, which is make. Interesting. So that's our word and our answer. Yeah, we can make the word make. I don't know if that's funny or not. Uh, anyway, so for number 13, was the least three digit positive integer that has two, five, and seven as factors. So in a pre previous problem, like the one with 11 and five, we just find the LCM for that, which is least common multiple. And we found how many three-digit positive integers there are. Uh, so once again, we're going to have to find the LCM of two, five, and seven. That's a weird seven. Uh, is that's seventy. So 
the least three-digit positive integer. So once again, we have to do the same strategy, 140 being 70 times two, and then all the way to 980, which is 70 times 14. So since we're omitting one, since 70 is not a three-digit number, uh, so 14 minus one is 13. Uh, that's a much shorter problem. Uh, so our answer is 13. So do you guys have any questions? If not, I'm gonna move on. Uh, yeah, right. Thank you for reminding me that it's uh, 559 where I am, which is Texas, I'm calculating by South Central time. So it is the end of class. So thank you for coming to my Logi STEM talk. And if you want more, then we have a lot of other talks like at the end. Wait, let me show you what we're talking about in, in the fun math thing. So at the end, we're talking about, so I already talked about number sense, but there's a lot of other uh, fun math workshops that you can come to and you can check them out on our site. And thank you for coming here.